It's the then versus now challenge. Quarterfinals. Welcome back to the scrapyard, friends. We're back for the last race of the quarterfinals. It's Team Then's 1971 Ford Maverick versus Team Now's 2005 Nissan 350Z. And the winner of today's race will fill the final spot in the semifinals. Now let's take a quick look at the journey each racer took to make it here today. Up first, representing Team Now, it's the 2005 Nissan 350Z. In Race 6 Heat 1, the 350Z pulled off an amazing block into a reverse block ending that heat for the Datsun 510. Then in heat two, the 510 returned the favor by blocking the 350Z to a standstill. But in heat three, the 350Z managed a drifting block, got loose and spun his way across the line. Moving on to today's other racer representing team then, we have the 1971 Ford Maverick. He's quickly become a fan favorite. In race eight, heat one, the Maverick started out looking slow, was blocked and lost, but due to his weight advantage was unfazed by the Focus RS. But in heat two, which was the Maverick and Team Ben's last chance to stay alive in this tournament, he stunningly shot down the track, leaving the RS dumbfounded and too late to pull the same block maneuver from heat one. Maybe the Maverick had been playing possum the whole time. Then in Heat 3, the decisive moment for Team Then, the Maverick positioned himself so the high-powered Focus RS actually pushed him down the track. And then he finished the race with that crazy pinball block, which was immediately named the Maverick in his honor. This is a very important race, fans. Not only will it determine who will fill that oh-so-important final spot in the semifinals, but it will determine if mathematically Team Then even still has a chance to win the team trophy. Now enough talking. Let's get racing. Scrapyard Diecast Racing. Well, fans, let's get this started. The last race of the quarterfinals. During our intro segment, the officials were busy behind the scenes clearing the track. So we are a go for race. In lane one, it's the Maverick, and in lane two, it's the 350Z. Three, two, one, go! 350Z into the lead. He blocks in the bottleneck. Maverick loses it. 350Z wins. Scrapyard diecast racing. You can see the 350Z edge out the lead. And it's easy with 300 horsepower compared to the Maverick's 145. And the 350Z tries to push the Maverick into the edge of the bottleneck to end this race fast. But like the Focus RS learned in round one, that Maverick weighs as much as a battleship. It's actually the 350Z that goes into a tailspin as a result of his own block. But it turns out to his advantage because coming out of the bottleneck, the Maverick ends up underneath the 350Z. And while trying to avoid the 350Z, the Maverick ends up spinning and comes to a heat ending collision with the wall in the final straight. And like in round one, the 350Z manages to once again straighten himself out with the help of those safety rocks. Scrapyard Diecast Racing. And with that, the 350Z puts the first win on the scorecard. And again, the Maverick finds himself in a do or die situation. Scrapyard Diecast Racing. Drivers have circled back to the starting gate and they both look tense. This could be the one to decide it all. We're just waiting on the officials to do their final safety check. And there it is. This track is hot. In lane one, it's the 350Z, and in lane two, it's the Maverick. Three, two, one, go! 350Z blocks. He loses it. Maverick flips. But crosses the line. Unbelievable. He's still alive. Scrapyard Diecast Racing. Again, the 350Z edges out the lead and tries a ricochet move off the edge of the bottleneck. But it seems that any attempt to use brute force against that battleship is pointless. The 350Z loses control wildly after that collision, and the Maverick, seeing his opportunity to stay alive, floors it towards the finish line. Yeah, but he comes off wrong at that second transition of the bottleneck. A mistake many drivers make, because it's not as steep as the one on the downhill. Drivers get overconfident exiting the bottleneck. Uh-huh, but he spins on his roof backwards across the line. Do you think he did that on purpose? Did he steal the Mustang's watching you lose move from race three and one-up it by doing it on his roof? Who knows, maybe he's looking for a second move to be named after him. Scrapyard Diecast Racing. 
Well, the overweight and underpowered Maverick just did the unthinkable and has managed to stay alive against a car that's nearly half its weight and twice as powerful. No wonder he's a fan favorite. Hey yo, how you doing? It's Frankie F V here. I've been a cab driver in this f city for the past 37 years, and I've seen it all. But what I ain't ever seen is shirts like this f***ing Ribuero is making. That's some f***ing high quality right there. And you don't have to just wear them neither. You could use them as a napkin if the corner guy put too much cream cheese on your bagel. And you could even use it to stick in a bust of radiator hose to get back to the station on time so your boss don't bust your fucking butt for being late. I'm telling you, nothing says New York like this f***ing shirt. You know what the f*** I'm talking about. So go ahead, click the f***ing link right there, order some stuff, forget about it. Scrapyard Diecast Racing. Aw oh, man, it's all riding on this one. For the last heat of the quarterfinals, in lane one, it's the Maverick. And in lane two, it's the 350Z. Three, two, one, go! They're even. They both lose it! Where's the Maverick? Whoa! That was the fastest finish of the race! And the Maverick did it on its roof! Wait, that also means he won! Did the Maverick just win? Yes, let's see if it was any clearer on the replay. Scrapyard Diecast Racing. Okay, let's see if we can make heads or tails of this. So, they start off pretty much even. And they continue that way down the length of the downhill. Yeah, but once they get into the bottleneck, that's when things go bonkers. The camera loses track of both racers. And then it catches up just in time with the 350Z to watch it stall out. But by that time, the Maverick was accelerating. Yes, accelerating on his roof across the line. Luckily, our finish line cam caught the action. Was the main cam being operated by one of the wrecking crews still wearing his welder's mask? I mean, I could have dropped the camera and probably done a better job. Luckily, the finish line cam is stationary, or we would have missed Maverick being saved by those safety rocks. I really think you're missing the big picture here. The Maverick won again. And let's keep in mind, he didn't cross the line in Heat 1, so he's the first car in Scrapyard history to make it to the semi-final round by winning both of his races on his roof. Incredible. And he scored two big team points for Team Then, closing the gap and keeping them in the game. Plus, he has locked his position in Race 2 of the semi-finals, where he'll face off against the Nissan GTR. <laughs> Good luck! The Battleship vs. Godzilla? Yeah, I know who I'm rooting for. Never mind him, folks. We've reached the end of today's event. And now, this is the point where we sign off from the broadcast booth. Next time we meet at the scrapyard, it'll be for the start of the semi-finals. There are only four drivers left. Who will win? I hope you'll join us again back here at the scrapyard, but until then, thank you all for watching. If you haven't done so, give us a like. And please subscribe to The Scrapyard so you never miss a race. And follow us on Instagram and Facebook for even more Scrapyard Diecast racing action. So, so please, please join, join us, us next, next time for, for the, the next, next installment, installment of... It's the 10 vs. Now Challenge! The Scrapyard Diecast Racing.